If you're confused by how DPI works in Canva, I don't blame you. I did some experiments and now I'm confused too. The good news is there's a workaround. In this video, we'll take a detailed look at DPI and see how it works or doesn't work in Canva, specifically for print on demand and other designs that you wanna print out into physical media. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and not a day goes by that I don't see some question online about DPI, Canva, or print on demand. And there's a good reason there's so many questions because there's tons of misinformation out there that's confusing people. There's incorrect information about what DPI actually is, how it works, and on top of all that, Canva has a very flawed implementation of what DPI should be. So I really wanna use this video to establish a firm foundation so we can all be on the same page of what DPI is and how we can actually solve our own problems and never really worry about what any program does again. And yes, we will be debunking some common myths. Okay, first, let's make sure we actually understand what DPI is. DPI stands for dots per inch, which I think lots of people know, but what does it actually mean? Well, it means how closely a printer can put dots in a inch on a physical product. The keyword there being physical product. So let's look at this example of a t-shirt here. So I know a lot of people design t-shirts and you may see something like a t-shirt supports 300 DPI. So in this example, if we had a one inch line on the t-shirt, if we could print at 300 DPI, that means we could print 300 dots in a one inch line. And of course, when you look at this line from far away, it'll start to look solid. And it might even be solid when the colors and inks bleed into each other. Now we just don't want to print lines, of course, we can also print squares. So we could have a square inch where we have 300 dots going horizontally and also 300 dots going up and down vertically. So that would give us 90,000 dots total. And like I said, when these dots have different colors, we get images. Now the different DPIs are appropriate for different products. Typically things within arm's reach like book covers or magazines or t-shirts, we like to have 300 DPI. For objects that are a little bit bigger and maybe slightly further away like rugs or tapestries, you can usually get away with 150. And for really big objects, you might even have something like 12 DPI, like for signs or big billboards. Okay, now let's go to the world of digital images, such as PNGs or JPEGs. And this is the most important fact you need to know. Images do not have DPI. I know everyone talks about their JPEGs having a DPI and you've used lots of programs where you can select DPI. We'll get to that later, but images have a resolution, which is width and height in pixels, and that's it. Now, vector images are a little bit different, but that's a different topic. We're just talking about your standard bitmap images like PNGs and JPEGs for this video. Also, you may have seen these things like PPI or pixels per inch and stuff like that. Don't even worry about that stuff. What you always wanna know is what is the width and height of your image in pixels. Okay, so now the big question, how do we make this jump from our world of pixels to this world of DPI? Well, it's actually much simpler than people think. Let's take this example of a t-shirt here and assume you're giving these kind of standard specs, say it's 15 inches wide by 17 inches tall, and the printer says they can print at 300 DPI. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we can print 15 times 300 dots in a row horizontally and 17 times 300 dots vertically. So if you calculate that out, that means we have 4,500 dots horizontally and 5,100 dots vertically. And what all this means is that if we wanna print an image at 300 DPI, we can just pick an image that's 4,500 pixels wide by 5,100 pixels tall, and we've got perfect 300 DPI. And that's as simple as it gets. For every dot that you wanna print out, just assume you need a pixel in your source image. So let's look at an example here in Printify. Now, the nice thing about Printify is they usually tell you exactly what pixel dimensions you need to hit a certain DPI. So for example, for this t-shirt, if you look in the bottom right, it says 4,500 by 5,100 for 300 DPI. So I have this image here that is 4,500 by 5,100. Let me export it and upload it to Printify. So I'll upload it. And we can see when it's done that it says it's high resolution 300 DPI. Let me remove this. Now let me save my image at half the size. So I'll export it and we'll see what happens here. So if I do 4,500, I'll just say divide by two. And I'm using the program Affinity Photo, but it doesn't really matter here. It's just all the same. So let me upload my smaller one. It's 2250 by 2550. Now I've uploaded my smaller image and Printify tried to fill the whole space with that image. And you can see the result is that it says 150 DPI. But I can show you, I can make it 300 DPI just by reducing the size back in half. Now I know this isn't a great solution, but it just shows you the fact that DPI is not related to the image itself. It's related to how big you print the image based on its pixels. So when this image prints at seven and a half by eight and a half inches, 
it actually will be 300 DPI. But if I double it, we're going to be printing out 150 DPI. And by the way, just as an aside, when you print things like this, it's probably still printing 300 dots within an inch, but it's just artificially increasing the size of your image, so you're not gaining any information, and it can look a little blocky. It's good to pay attention to Printify's hints here. If it says something is kind of orange, like medium or low resolution, I recommend going higher if possible. Now, just one more example. Let's go the other way. Let's double the size of our image. So let's see what happens if I do times two. It's gonna be 9,000 by 10,200. And I'll save as a JPEG just to make it a little smaller. And I'll upload it. I have shirt size times two. And now we can see that it's saying 600 DPI because my image was twice as big. Now, again, like the other example where I made it smaller, in reality, it's not likely printing at 600 DPI. It's probably still printing at 300 DPI, but it's just artificially shrinking our image so it fits the size. But, you know, this is kind of a good problem to have. It's better if your image is too big as opposed to being too small. So it may not really be printing at 600 DPI, but it's good enough. Okay, I know you guys are dying for me to get to Canva, but there's one more thing we need to explain, and this is going to clarify a lot of confusion you have. And that is, why do so many programs let us choose DPI if it doesn't mean anything for an image? Well, the answer is that there is one situation where it is useful. Now, I'm going to use Affinity Photo here, but this is something that applies to tons of programs. I believe it's in Photoshop and Illustrator, and almost all graphics programs do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document here. I'm going to go to File, New. And the crucial part is where we select the dimensions of our image and the format of it. So I'm going to say inches here. And let's make it simple, like 10 by 10, so the math works out really well. And you can see we actually can select DPI here. And this is useful because all this is going to do is do some simple math for us, which is it's going to create an image in pixels, but it's going to take inches and multiply it by the DPI we chose to give us the pixels. So here I had 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 DPI. This will give us an image that's 3000 by 3000 pixels. So I'm gonna click create. And you can see up here, that is exactly what happened. Let's create another example. So I'll do new, do inches. Let's do 10 by 10 again. And this time I'll keep the DPI at 72. So what will this give us? Well, this will give us 720 by 720 pixels. So I'll click create. And in fact, you see that's what that's done. So there's nothing here that talks about DPI. This whole drop down here is just a convenient way of doing some math for us to calculate how many pixels are going to be in our image. Now here's the unfortunate thing that a lot of these programs do. Even when you select pixels, you'll see DPI is still an option. So let me do a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. And the DPI drop down is still here even though it doesn't mean anything. So let me create a thousand by a thousand at DPI 72. And you can see we're a thousand by a thousand. Let's do another example. So we'll do a thousand by a thousand at 300 DPI. And I'll click create and it's still a thousand by a thousand. So that whole DPI drop down meant absolutely nothing for our image. And I think the fact that this drop down stays here all the time, regardless of whether you're doing pixels or inches, is what causes a lot of confusion. But really, this DPI drop down, it's only relevant when you're choosing these real world measurements like inches or yards or centimeters or whatever. It has no effect when you're doing pixels. Okay, so let's just do a quick summary so far. Images have a width and height in pixels. DPI is not part of an image, but some programs allow us to use DPI combined with inches to conveniently calculate how many pixels we want. Okay, so here I am in Canva and I'm using Canva Pro, so a couple things might not be available to you if you're doing the free program, but it's mostly the same. Now, the, a way to give yourself the most options in Canva is to make your file as big as possible, essentially, if you wanna print it out. So let's first examine this question of how big a document can we make in Canva? So I'm gonna click this create a design button here. And what we're really gonna be focusing on in this video is this custom size option here. So I'm gonna click on this. So I have it set to pixels. Let's put something really big like 10,000 by 10,000. And immediately you can see I get this error message. So it says dimensions must be 40 by 8,000. Let's make this 8,000 by 8,000. And we get another error message here. So it says now I'm limited to 3,125 in the second field. So I'll put that in there. So the maximum size of an edge is 8,000, but if you do that, your other edge can only be a maximum size of 3,125. So I'll create this. And we have a document here. Let me just give it a background color so Canva doesn't think it's empty. So now if we want to download this amazing composition of blue, what you can do is you can say share and then download. Now by default, it's 1x here, but actually we can go all the way up to 3.125x. 
and that'll give us an image of 25,000 by 9,766. So as far as I can tell, this is about as big as you can get in Canva. So just to make it interesting, I will add one element to the image. And let's download as a JPEG. I'll max out the size here and I'll download. So I downloaded my image. Let me open it in Affinity Photo. And it's open here and I can see that indeed my image is 25,000 by 9,766 pixels. It's quite a mouthful. Now what is the DPI of this image? Remember, the image does not have a DPI. But what we can say is if I wanted to print this at 300 DPI, I could do so at 83 inches by 32 inches. And I got that number just by dividing our dimensions by 300 on each side. Now one caveat into all of this is that in Canva, we don't really know how big these source images are. So as far as I know, I can't really figure out how big this cat image is. So if I click info, it doesn't really say anything. So it's kind of tricky to find out, but I think in general, you're okay if you look at the image and the quality seems to be good. But just remember, like if you take a tiny image and you increase it dramatically into a bigger image, you might still have a loss of resolution. Now you don't need to make every Canva image as big as possible like I did here. I just kind of exaggerated it to show us what the limits were, but it kind of gives you an idea of what is supported. But the main thing I recommend is to really start thinking about your images in terms of width and height and pixels. Why is that? Because Canva's concept of DPI just doesn't make sense. And we're gonna look at that now. So I'm gonna click create design again, and we'll do custom size and I'll select inches. Now you may notice immediately that there's no DPI dropdown. And as I said earlier, a DPI dropdown would make sense here because it would multiply by our inches to give us how big our image is in pixels. So I was thinking about this problem and I thought, why not just make an image that's one inch by one inch and see what dimensions Canva gives us. So let's do that. So I'll do one by one and I'll create a new design. Now in Canva to see the dimensions of an image, one way is to go to file but it's just going to tell you what you created it with. So it's not really telling us what the pixels are. So to see what the pixels are, I'm actually gonna share and download. So I go download. And when I do this, you can see it's 300 by 300 pixels. Now remember our image was one inch by one inch. So 300 by 300 means the DPI is 300. But don't stop watching here. Let's go back. Okay, so if one inch by one inch was 300 by 300, let's look at 10 inches by 10 inches. So clearly this should be 3000 by 3000. Let's check it out. Share, download, and now we see it's 2000 by 2000. So this would imply 200 DPI. When we created a one inch document, it was 300 by 300, but our 10 inch document was 2000 by 2000. So it seems like something's not matching up there. Now I can make you even more confused. Let's go to create design, custom size. Let's do one inch by one inch. Now, if I select another unit, it will convert to that unit. So if I do pixels, now it's saying 96 by 96 pixels. So in the span of a minute, we've seen three different DPIs Canva uses, 300, 200, and 96. But wait, there's more. Let's create an eight and a half by 11 inch document. Okay, so I have this eight and a half by 11 inch document. So let's check it out. Share, download, 1545 by 2000. So I did the math there and it's like 182 DPI or something. So based on that fact, I wouldn't trust any of these pre-made templates that talk about inches or any other kind of real world units. So hopefully by now you've seen that Canva's concept of DPI is really inconsistent and doesn't make sense. Now I want to bust some myths that I've seen online. I won't name names, but I Googled Canva DPI and I found various articles explaining things and I think there's some stuff I should clarify. So let's look into some myths. So myth number one is that Canva is 96 DPI. We've seen this isn't really the case. I guess it comes from this interface here where people had this one inch by one inch and they noticed that it's 96 if you convert it. But we saw in other examples, if you actually create a document that is an inch by an inch, you'll get 300 pixels by 300 pixels. I think another reason people have this misconception is due to MS Paint. So let me download this image here, which is just a thousand by a thousand and I've opened it in MS Paint here. Now, this is a common program I've seen people use to quote unquote, determine what the DPI of an image is. And a lot of times they'll just go to file image properties. And basically no matter what, it just says 96 here. So I've seen more than one tutorial mention this fact as proof that an image is 96 DPI, but this isn't really the case, but it's an irrelevant number and it doesn't mean anything when you know the dimensions of an image in pixels. Myth number two is that you can download your project as a PDF and convert it to get 300 DPI. Now the problem here is that any website that converts your PDF to get a higher resolution is just resizing the image in it. 
it's not actually giving you any new information about your image. It's the same as just resizing the image to begin with. The bigger problem is that this is actually quite insecure and you shouldn't be uploading and downloading PDFs to random conversion websites. This is how people who have no idea how they keep getting hacked often get hacked. Now there is one element of truth to this PDF myth, and that is that if you wanna get the highest resolution version of an asset from Canva, oftentimes the best way to do it is to put it in a PDF and download that. So let me show you how to do that. So we have some photos here, and these are high resolution photos. I'll put it in my Canva document. Now my document here is only a thousand by a thousand pixels, but what I can do is I can download it as a PDF and I'll do it as PDF for print. So this is gonna be the highest resolution possible. Now remember, with a PDF, it's a little bit different than a PNG or a JPEG, because a PDF can actually embed other assets within it, and those assets can be higher resolution. So let me download the PDF. Now I've opened my PDF in a PDF editor here, Affinity Publisher, and if I select this image, you actually can see that it's quite high res, much higher resolution than my Canva document was. And I can actually copy this image and paste it into something else like Affinity Photo, and you can see the resolution still stays high. Now again, this works because PDF can be a wrapper for higher resolution assets. Just make sure you download the PDF for print. Now I still really don't like this method in general for design because you really just don't know what you're gonna get for resolutions. You don't know what size things are, and I really recommend just starting your project from the beginning, understanding what pixel dimensions you want your output to be. Do you still have questions about how DPI works for print on demand and especially Canva? If so, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer. But here's the bottom line. Find out what pixel dimensions you need for your chosen product and create a document that matches that size in pixels or is even higher resolution. You can use inches and DPI, but remember this is just a quick calculation to get you how many pixels you need. And don't even try to figure out how DPI works in Canva because it's confusing and inconsistent. So on that note, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.